Thoughts on Bonds to Yellick? Hit the ball on home plate. Yeah, very good. Um, that statement came out a year or two ago. And as soon as I heard that, I pulled up a video of me. Um, I was doing a clinic in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I think it was Pennsylvania. I think it was Harrisburg where I had worked with a, a travel ball organization and I had them looking really, really good off the tee and off flips. Actually, just off, off tee. And then when we went to the flips, they just lost it. Like, all of a sudden it was muscle time. All of a sudden it was time to just swing and forget everything we talked about. And <clears throat> they were all out front. They were all going out to get the ball. So, I can remember telling them, take the swing and I want you to hit the ball straight in the ground. Do the swing that we worked on, do the high level pattern swing we worked on, but hit the ball straight in the ground. And I didn't, I didn't mean home plate like Yelich or Bond said to Yelich, that's really hard to do. I meant just like five or six feet in front of home plate, hit the ball into the ground. And as soon as they started doing that, they started hitting line drives. They started doing the high level pattern properly against the flip, okay? Basically, what they were, I was asking them to do is let the ball travel, okay? And get your speed down the back, not up the front. Get your barrel speed down the back, not up the front. And it was really helpful. So yeah, I agree with that Bonds Yelich talk. I try to remind hitters that what we will, what we do will feel uncomfortable for a while as we were taught so differently for so long. That's exactly right. Um, I'm oftentimes using these, this phrase, what feels right is wrong and what feels wrong is right. And by that I mean as they're standing there waiting for a pitch, their old swing feels right before it happens and then it feels wrong when it happens. Their new swing feels wrong before it happens but feels right when it happens. And so that's a, a mental hurdle to get over. There's, as you're waiting for the ball, it feels wrong. It isn't wrong, I don't mean it's wrong, but it just feels different. It feels wrong to you because you're used to feeling a different way when you receive a pitch. And that can be a hurdle for people to overcome. And that's just practice, that's just okay, it feels wrong, but I gotta trust it. And then execute it, and hopefully they get the reward of a squared baseball, and everything's good. And generally, that's exactly how it works. Okay, what else do we have here? I was reminiscing with uh, one of my customers that came here this last week about when my son uh, learned this and had that breakout summer, his problem prior to that was catching up to the fastball. He was just late. He wasn't, we didn't know what the command drill was at that time. And, and then when we had our aha moment, we, we probably still didn't have the command drill because I, did, I, I developed the command drill after he had his success, a way of teaching what he could do. But he was command drilling, we just didn't have the drill, if, if you understand what I'm saying. And so he's playing a game against the, the best pitcher he's ever seen in his life, men's fast pitch softball, throwing 80 plus from 43 feet and nothing is straight. It rises, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right, and a changeup. There's not a true fastball in men's fast pitch. Everything moves. So we're trying to get him to catch up and the, the high level pattern technique, the snap has got him to where he can catch up to the good fastball. And he hit a homer off this guy um, early in the game. And then, and at bat or two later, Brandon got a changeup from him and he stayed back and ripped a base hit into left field. Brandon's a right-handed batter, so he's a little late on it, but it was barreled, okay? And it's interesting because after the game, I went up to him and said, Brandon, how did you do that? I mean, we've been trying to catch up to a fastball and you were able to catch up the fastball and now you're able to just wait for the off-speed pitch? He said, Dad, because I'm quick, I can just read it and wait, and, and I can use my quickness when I need to use my quickness. I can use it instantly if it's a fastball. I can use it a tick later if it's an off-speed pitch. And that really is the magic of what we teach, okay? 
um, I had taught him some things and, and, and in that at bat he taught me some things. He taught me how effective the technique is not just for the fastball but for any pitch you get. And Aaron and Scott and Ian Happ and my major league guys, they'll tell me when, when they're right, when they're really, really feeling it, when they're command drill ready and get their load, their 3D load and get to that position on time, there's nothing they can't hit. Okay? They might make a bad judgment sometimes. The ball moved more than they thought or they swung at a ball. They thought it was a strike, but it was a ball. They make, well, they're not perfect. They make some bad judgments at times. But when they read the pitch right, it didn't matter what it was, they could snap it, okay? One cue that has helped, we are getting the barrel up to speed as quickly as possible, creating an arc that the ball will run into. That's excellent. That the ball will run into instead of going out and getting it. Once they see how much more quickness and power HLP offers, they get more committed to focusing on a feel versus worrying about mechanics. Absolutely right. And you've probably seen me use the Miguel Cabrera video of six home runs where everyone is launched like this and yet he's hitting home runs at six different pitch locations. So in other words, he launched the bat first and then made the adjustment to the pitch location. And that's absolutely critical. So basically, Miguel Cabrera is creating a barrel arc, okay? And he's letting the arc come into the ball he does have the ability to contort his body a little bit to get that arc in front of the ball or let his arms out a little bit if it's outside or pull him in a little bit if it's inside, but he's creating this arc and he's letting the ball come into the arc. One thing I uh, mentioned now and then is uh, if you had a fan that was not protected, in other words, it's not in a casing, if you had a fan blade that's just going really fast, and you threw a wad of paper in it, poof, it shoots it right out. That's the feeling of the swing. Our barrel turn is the fan blade. It's not a continuous rotation like a fan blade, but it is a one revolution fan blade. And you gotta get the feeling that the ball is coming into your fan blade. Very good. Another thing I talk about is uh, most hitters are familiar with the Iron Mike pitching machine. It's a piece of steel, metal, bolted to the ground, and all it can do is this. Grabs a ball here, comes up, throws it. Grabs a ball, comes up, throws it. It's a piece of steel anchored to the ground. We need to feel like we are a piece of steel anchored to the ground, and all we can do is create an arc. Now, technically, we're human, and we do move forward a little bit, but it's a really good analogy to get people to understand that all I have to do is create this arc. I don't want to take my arc out to the ball. I want to feel like I'm fastened to the ground. Yes, I move a little bit, but I want to feel like I'm not going out there. I'm going to do this and I'm going to let that ball come into me. Okay. The example you just shared reminds us that when we do this correctly, it turns everything into a changeup. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Ready to launch, just keep loading a tick longer for the off-speed pitch. Exactly right. Um, and one of the challenges I have with my pro players is, okay, they understand the command drill, they're real good at it. And they understand the 3D loading and they're real good at it. But the 3D loading takes them out of their command drill feeling and now they've got a little bit of slop in their swing. They have to move to another spot. At the time they didn't want to swing, they're either moving, um, they're not fused, and therefore they're moving independently, or they have to uh, move to a different spot before they can swing, and therefore they're not quick. And therefore, the pitch is not a changeup. Therefore, they're rushing to catch up to it. Even, do, even though they're doing maybe 90 or 95% of what they're supposed to do right, they've introduced a little slop in their system because they didn't maintain the quick readiness of the command drill as they did their 3D loading. But that concept of turning it into a changeup is huge. Um, I so wish I knew that when I was a player. Um, I, I don't do this, and I, I need to qualify a little bit. I'm 67 and I'm not gonna hit any of the balls. Any of the balls I hit good 
aren't going to be hit as hard as, as the players that come to me. But if we had a contest and just counted barrels, okay, you can tell when I barrel a ball because I use a half bat and you get that great sound, a flat bat, I mean, okay? If I was hitting and they're hitting, I'm going to barrel more balls than them. Now, the ones they barrel go way farther than me. Don't get me wrong. I'm not... But I can create this change up, I'm waiting for the pitch feeling every time. And they are consistent at it. They're pretty good, don't get me wrong, they're pretty good, but they're not where they could be. Okay, let me scroll back, I've missed a few things here. Is forward movement even really B, okay? Is forward movement even really necessary at all? Okay, good question. It is, but it's got to be arrested. Okay, if I just move forward like this, I'm totally out of control, and I'm going to have to push my barrel when it comes time to swing. But you have to understand the good stretch comes by arresting your forward movement by pulling back. So here's forward movement. Here's arrested forward movement. Okay, my head pretty much stays still when I do this, when I'm pulling back against that forward movement. Now, I'm only moving a little bit, the ball of my rear femur, I'm coiling, but as I'm coiling, look at the background, you can start, there's a fire extinguisher right back there in the wall that you can see. Here's a coil, you can't see the fire extinguisher. Here's a coil as I move forward, there it is, a little red thing hanging on the wall, okay? So my ball of my femur is coiling and it's going forward just a little bit. I'm guessing that's six inch, six or eight inches, okay? Now it would go forward a lot more if I wasn't doing this. So we've got a force pulling this way and a force pulling this way. And when this force gives up, whew, then you get a burst of forward momentum, okay? So my analogy of being a steel Machine anchored to the ground isn't 100% perfect, but it's a good analogy to get them to feel that they need to keep their head still and they need to create this arc and let the ball come into the arc. Okay, good question. 